I've been on a big project over the last few months, and that's to build a deck for some friends. It's a bi-level deck that uh, abuts up against a pool concrete pad, an in-ground pool, and it has an angle at the very back. So it's been a kind of a complex build, and I've never built a deck before, ever. So I had to go through a lot of learning to set the posts, put the beams in place. And right now, here, I'm cutting the ends of the joists off before I put in the frame. It's kind of backwards from what I've seen has to happen, because usually they're hanging this off of a house. Uh -huh. And so the frame goes up first, but in this case, it's freestanding, so I couldn't do that. And because of the angle on the back edge along the wooden fence, I had to uh, cut an angle here to make it look, flush it up. And uh, as you saw, my circular saw does not angle in the direction that I needed, and I wasn't going to turn that thing over again, so I just cut it off with my handsaw, put up a ledge on either side of this system. You can see the angle that it has to meet right there on the right-hand side of your screen. And then I used those ledges to place the frame. I would have shown you a lot more video, but it was basically me digging holes, mixing concrete, pouring concrete, setting the beams. And that's available everywhere on YouTube. And you saw that I was able to do the job because there they are. I'm working by myself here. I don't have any help. So it's really taken me a long time to get everything done, learning as I go. It's been slow going, and it's almost done now. So I'm showing you an update of what I've been up to over the summer and now. You can see that this, is, this yard is framed by two fences. One is wood and one is steel. And the steel fence is the relatively straight fence. And it abuts up against a neighbor's property, which is downhill. Whereas the wooden fence is at an angle, and everything had to match the distances. So here now I'm uh, attaching the uh, joists to the frame with joist hangers. They really do strengthen up the joints, even in a freestanding deck, and they allow me to attach these joists without having a whole bunch of screw holes on the facing side. Now even though this is going only to be visible to the neighbor, I definitely wanted to minimize the number of holes going through from the outside. And so the joist hangers came in very handy. Now to attach the uh, planks and the border planks that I've created, I had to also create parallel sections on the long side, the longitudinal side of the deck. So I scarfed some pieces to fit in between the joists on that angled side. On the straight side nearest the pool, it was easy. I just put in a second board. You saw it when I was screwing things in. But here I had to create angles. Here now I'm working on the lower section. This is the section that's just above the ground. And I'm using a short saw that I bought just for quick cutoff purposes around the house at this location. Not my own house. It's an $8 saw and I'm planning on throwing it away when it's done, but it's doing the job that I need right here. I made that scarf joint and uh, screw it into position. And once these are in place, I am making the border. And the border is made out of uh, 2 by 8 redwood. I was going to use 2 by 12, but that was too much. I use a half lap joint on the corners, and to aid drainage at the lapping joint, the seam, I drilled holes into the bottom lap. This will prevent water from puddling up inside there no matter what happens. It's wood, it's going to be outdoors. It's going to warp. But there you see the border in place. Anyway, 
what I've done here is taken some marks on my framing square, and that's what I'm using to line up the screw holes. We were able to get uh, two by six redwood planks that stretched all the way across the width of the deck. So yes, it makes for a little bit of a boring layout, but there's going to be furniture and a fire pit on top of this. And here you see, kind of plain, still beautiful in my opinion, especially for, I, for my first deck. But the extra wood off of these 16 foot pieces are now going to be used to make these planter stands that are going to buttress up against bottom stair and give it a little bit of an architectural flair. For one of these stands I had to make multiple cuts to make it fit over the three levels that it has to rise above. And so I started with the cuts. I would, didn't know how I wanted to join them. I knew I didn't want to spend a lot of time creating complex joinery. And I didn't want to use a 45 degree joint. So I decided to just do this sort of jigsaw approach. Cutting out tenons and mortises, but these go on the ends and they stay loose because these boards are going to swell. This is definitely outdoor stuff. And I think it looks interesting. It the widths of all of these cuts were made according to the boards that I was using, so it's proportional. And here I'm starting to, after having assembled the frame, I'm now going to be making the cuts. You'll notice that I'm not doing this in situ at the, at the job site. That's why I made these things sort of backwards. Uh, and I made them a little long so that if I got to the job site and they were too tall on some of these cuts, all the better for me to just cut them down rather than make them too short and have to figure out how to, how to work all that out again. to resort to looking at the plans that I just showed you, the SketchUp, to make sure that I had my cuts in the right spot. Because we were using, again, the cutoffs of the deck material, and I didn't have a lot of it left. So I had to be a little bit more precise. And that included ripping down some uh, pieces to make the three slats on each uh, side going with a sort of a mission-style look. Everything was attached from the inside, so there were a few screw holes on the outside. And then I used a block that I had cut to a specific width. It doesn't look like it here, but it is cut to a specific width, ripped to a specific width, so that I have the two outer pieces placed equidistant from the frames, and then one inner piece can be set square between those two outer pieces. I did this for all of those. Then I rounded off their corners. And it's looking pretty good so far. You see the, the highest level there. And now I have to create the end caps. There are three layers of end caps. And the bottom layer I did cut out of 45 because it's technically not going to be visible. So the wood can shrink and uh, stretch as it will because it's I just didn't want end grain showing out at this level I didn't care about the other two levels. I just didn't want end grain showing at this level So I cut eight of these pieces screwed them into place And used them as the basis for the rest of the uh, end caps the top caps This is the second layer of the top cap, and these are spacers that 
add a little bit of flair, a little bit of um, stickly or even art deco if you want to. But they are also the grate onto which the planter bowl is going to sit. That's why these are plant stands, you see. And the owner will then just go to her local store, which sells what they call color spots, which are basically pots that already have plants put in them and arranged. And all you have to do is set them someplace and water them, and they'll stay pretty for the rest of the season. So I decided to, to use, again, the half-lap joints to make a grid that sits on top of the uh, first layer of the end cap. And then I'm going to route out the shape of the bowl and uh, set it into that grid and also create some spaces in the end cap, the, the final top caps. To uh, accommodate these large 14 inch wide bowls. Here you see I'm about to take out that much from one of the top boards at the 2x8 and you can barely see the outline of the bottom of the bowl. And I used my draw knife and uh, sander to make this quick cutout. And then I attached them inside the bevel as well as up underneath. And there's one of the planters done. I did the same thing for the other planter, and now they're installed. The deck by this time had been stained, so you can see the difference. And the planters will be stained as well, as well as the stairs. Stairs were an easy thing. They were just running kick uh, stretchers from the base. And up next, we'll be installing handrails. Remember to please click like, click subscribe to see future videos. Here are some past videos that I've produced. And as always, thank you for watching.